Okay. Thank you. So I can see how many participants we have as of now. Very nice. Um, I can't see the number of participants. How many participants as of now, Diksha? Ma'am, we have 83 participants. Okay, so there are 84 the now. 84 now. Yes. So shall I keep the session bilingual or how do you want me to do it? Uh, Ma'am, these are all English speaking states because these are the okay. South Indian states. So in English. Okay. Perfect. And um, one more thing. Are they familiar with the UDL based resources that we have developed in CIT and CERT, the sign language videos? Uh, Ma'am, some Any, might be uh, familiar, but some might not be familiar. But no, as a part of this training, has somebody shown them? No. Oh uh, no, ma'am, not uh, until now. Getting. Uh, okay, wonderful. So, uh, friends, this is going to be a interactive session, wherein I'll be asking you to reply to my queries on chat. And yes, two persons have already written. Good afternoon. So, good afternoon, everyone. And today. This session on the very first day of training is on accessible digital resources. So tell me, when you are talking about digital resources, what more could we add to them to make them accessible? There are two questions here. Number one, what more could be added to make the digital resources accessible? And number two, accessible for whom? So these are the two things that I want your opinion on. Say, for example, ki ek PDF hai, that PDF is a digital resource. So, is it accessible? Write your answers in chat, please. So, okay, we need to make the, it is accessible, but not to all, all. Okay, fine. But when we are saying it is accessible, but not accessible to all, what do we mean by that? Anyone? To whom it may not be accessible? Privacy settings for accessibility to all the students. Freedom may not be available in their devices. It cannot be password protected. You need the PDF reader. I'm glad to read your answers. That's great. So when we are talking about accessibility, that too in the context of digital resources, we all are thinking in terms of the privacy settings, in terms of password protection, in terms of some software or something which is like um, which which gives PDF in audio format maybe maybe speech to maybe text to speech kind of a thing TTS जिसको हम बोलते हैं right so लेकिन एक बात ये बताओ no all the participants and including me we all have to think if there is a PDF and we don't have a software which converts PDF into audio, then how a blind person will be able to access it? When we are talking about digital resources, do you know in all your mobiles, there is an accessibility center? How many of you are aware of that? Diksha, you may switch off your video. No worries. Okay, text to speech is only one aspect of that. But in all our mobiles, there is an accessibility center. Look at your mobile and check whether it's there or no. Yes, I know screen reader is there in accessibility center. 
in WhatsApp, translator, etc. Yes. Okay, that's great. So few people are aware of accessibility center that exists in your in our smartphones. Fine. But majority may not be knowing about it. So your classwork or your homework is to explore your own device for accessibility applications that it has. Okay. And you'll be surprised to know the blind persons they are using mobile the same way that you and I are using. And their devices are not different from the ones that are using. So this means their handsets are not different from our handsets. If you have a blind friend or a person or a student in your ecosystem or in your professional workspace, and if you give your mobile to that person, that person will take few minutes to become oriented with that. And But that person would be able to use your mobile as proficiently as you are using, you and I are using. So that means devices are accessible for everyone. What about the digital resources? Yes, PDF may not be accessible for each and everyone. It may not be accessible for a blind person. But there are inbuilt applications which you and I may not have used it because we have never felt the need for using those, those plugins, those add-ons, which converts PDFs into a audible audio file. Microsoft Edge is what is Microsoft Edge? I'm just trying to wake you up. I'm just ensuring that you don't fall asleep. Yes, it's a browser, especially after the post-lunch session. So Microsoft Edge is a browser. And if you open a PDF in that, so what happens? It gives you an option which reads your PDFs and gives you the audio output. Most of the blind people end up using that, right? So this is one thing. Another thing, how to make, now this conversation that I'm having with you, if we have a deaf person among us in the audience, then how do I make the conversation accessible to that person? A participant has enabled closed captioning. What's a closed caption? Yeah, what is a closed caption? Whatever I'm speaking, that would be converted into, into what? Text. Right, Sasikala Ji? You are the only one who is giving me very nice expressions. And I can see P. Mohammed Ji as well as Prasada Babu as well. So they are not giving me even smiles also. <laughs> From your expression at least I'm able to know that yes you are listening to me you are understanding so that's more like a face-to-face -face class yes subtitles Aparna G. Patil is saying yes closed captioning is basically whatever I'm speaking that would be converted into text or subtitles as we call that but that will depend on my pronunciation my diction the speed at which I'm speaking so many a times it has happened that whatever I'm speaking, if you can switch on your closed captioning, you'll be able to read the text, which automatically gets converted off my audio. Sometimes it would be nice. It would be like 100% accurate, but some human intervention is required. So take that closed captioning with a pinch of salt. So if a deaf person is there, the best thing is to to give the gist of whatever the session is, a summary of that beforehand to that person in writing. And then if that person switches on the closed captioning, then since we have already pre-familiarized that deaf person about our talks in detail, that person will be able to make connections. This is a way of making resources 
accessible to person. Now this video is getting recorded. So this is also, we are creating a digital resource. So what we can do to make it accessible, we can add closed captioning. Somebody can read and do the transcription and then that can be added. So that is one way, another way of doing it. That would be post recording, post training session. Another thing is, if we have children in our classes, because you all are going, are our state resource group. So you are going to create e-content for your own state, right? So when you are going to create the e-content for your own state, that means you will be writing scripts and not only scripts, you will be then developing either audio or video based on these scripts. So, um, Rasina ji, how many disability conditions we are recognizing nowadays? You can write in chat. Rasina ji, audio, if you are able, trying to hide the audio, that doesn't work then. Your video is visible. So, if you are not able to mute, unmute yourself, you can write in chat. No, I, I can unmute myself, ma'am. Okay. Uh, can you so, repeat the question, ma'am? Yeah, my question is, how many disability conditions we recognize nowadays? Legally. Uh, I don't know exactly, ma'am, but deaf, deafness, blindness, hmm. orthopedic. Okay. I just want the number, not the labels of this. Perfectly okay, no issues. Prasad Babuji, will you be able to tell us the number of disability conditions? I'm not going to comment on the answers you're giving me on chat since I have asked this question to Prasada Babu. Prasada Babu, I can't hear you. Unmute yourself and then tell me. Okay, no answer from Prasada Babu. So uh, in the chat, I can see 21, 21, 19, maybe 13 physical and mental, 30 decibel. This is the beautiful answers that I'm getting from you all. Somebody is saying five, four. See, this is the level of awareness we all have. I'm including myself on into this. And uh, Srinivasa is saying 21, then Sital Lakshmi is saying 10, then 20, then 21 conditions. See, the priority is with 21 conditions. And I really like the look on Rasina Ji's face. She's surprised. Yes, we recognize, legally recognize and maintain your smile. You have such a beautiful smile. We recognize 21 disability conditions, especially after rights of persons with disability at 2016. Does it mean that do I need to make my digital resources accessible for all these 21 conditions of disabilities? And not to forget, after National Education Policy 2020, Nowadays, we are thinking about inclusive education and inclusive classroom settings. Then we also take into account So this, apart from these disability conditions, especially after the passage of uh, this uh, launch of this NEP 2020 National Education Policy 2020, inclusive education is not restricted to only disability. Section 6 of NEP 2020 says equitable and inclusive education. When it's equitable and inclusive education, that means when we are talking about inclusion, we are thinking about disabilities, we are thinking about disadvantages as well. <laughs> okay, so when we are talking about disability and disadvantages, NEP 2020 recognizes five different identities. And what are these five different identities? These identities are gender, 
gender is not restricted to only male and female it includes transgenders as well lgbtq right and then second identity is about the socio economic conditions and who all comes in the socio economic conditions the urban poor the street beggars the orphans all these all these persons they belong to the second identity third identity is regional differences why regional differences you and i have experienced the children have often have to travel miles before they reach schools sometimes they have to cross the rivers as well sometimes they have to cross the mountains as well right so these difficult geographical regions children coming from there and then don't forget about the multilinguality india is so diverse that language changes at maybe after every 50 kilometers or so the dialect changes so we these are the challenges that are in front of us when we are thinking or conceptualizing how to make digital resources accessible. These are the four, no, three identities that I've talked about, gender, socioeconomic, and regional. Fourth is the, uh, so again, related to social disparities. And under this comes SCST and minorities. These are our familiar categories. We are working towards their inclusion since independence itself. And the fourth identity is disability. Fifth identity, sorry. First is gender, socioeconomic, then regional, then again social dis disadvantages, minority status, and fifth is disability. And within these each category, there is a huge diversity exists. So when you are thinking about making a resources accessible, how are we going to conceptualize? That is why this session has been planned on the day one. Because the consequent you will be learning about how to write scripts, how to develop programs based on the scripts. So when you are creating digital resources, ask yourself, will this script be accessible? to a child who is not able to see or a person who is having print challenges? Will this script be accessible to a person who is deaf? Will this script be accessible to a person maybe among the audience who is having a different language from English and Hindi? That is why the states are encouraged to create their own digital resources so that up you can create the resources in your own local languages. And you know, CIT has also faced this challenge. During Corona, we started working on digital resources and how we overcome come the challenges. NCRT has a mandate to work in languages, English, Hindi and Urdu. And during Corona days, when students and teachers wanted all resources in the format of like digital, so we worked on creating videos. But when we were creating videos, we had the same challenge, how to make these videos accessible to blind person and how to make this these videos that we are making accessible to a person who is deaf. So what we did was, can anybody suggest? Mohammed Kasim ji. I am enjoying this class. Ji, tell me. Unmute yourself and tell me. What well, solution can you take part of? Pardon? That means you're not listening. Everyone. I can call anybody. I'm asking when CIT started developing video resources, we also had the same challenge in front of how to make this video accessible for a blind person or how to make these videos the same video accessible for a deaf person. What solution CIT found? Somebody is saying Diksha portal. Madam, Diksha is a portal where you will upload the resources for each and everyone to use. But how to include 
एम सोवनिए डॉक्टर एम सोवनी डेजी ओके मोहम्मद शेरशाद सिंह डेजी सो वट इज डेजी जी मोहम्मद शेरशाद जी अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ एंड टेल अस वॉट इज डेजी डिजिटल एक्सेसिबल इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम है हाँ सो वॉट डू वी डू देयर Many people okay. may not be aware of Daisy. So we can convert it into the that means uh, those who have who are uh, deaf and dumb. And, so uh, both Daisy is usable for deaf and dumb. I have heard about that. That's why I replied. Okay, but still, at least you are aware about the term Daisy. Daisy is. internationally accepted format for creating audio resources now you can say i can easily record a audio on my mobile then to use daisy see if there are books big books like 1000 page or 500 page book then do, don't we want our blind friends to have the ease of navigation as easily as we go to a particular page particular line in case of printed resources the same ease of navigation is provided by the daisy it gives you easy access to reach a particular page particular paragraph line or even word so that is why daisy is an internationally accepted format for converting the books or any resource in audio format and since it's an audio format so majorly it is useful for blind person right audio in daisy format require a daisy player you can explore more about daisy and next is how do i make my audio video again the same question what solution cit found yes we experimented with daisy but daisy is only for audio what about the deaf people anyone g mohammed shershad sir we can't hear you sign language yes sign language so very good isl so have you seen our isl videos how many of you have seen our isl videos okay one person nodding head that's it no so allow me to share the isl videos that we have so that you will be able to see let me try doing this so can you see google on your screens yes no it's sharing yes it is now visible okay so i am writing diksha there if you are familiar with diksha portal okay now i am clicking diksha.gov.in so once i click on diksha.gov.in i have already selected ncert then cbsc okay so let me explore diksha if i am exploring diksha then see on the left hand side it is asking me cbsc ncert it is asking me to choose the board and organization i am choosing board and organization as ncert cbsc medium i am choosing english let's see let me choose class 3 and let me deselect class 1 okay so it's class 3 now the subject let's choose english so i am getting two books marigold okay let me select marigold so let's wait till the book is loading
okay so the the book is visible now let me click on all resources and when i'm clicking on all resources i'm scrolling down so see all chapters are visible now let's see good morning garden when i'm clicking on chapter 1 and i am scrolling down trying to scroll down not working it should work yes so see i'm scrolling down and i reach almost end and there towards the end i hope you are able to see a blue hand that blue hand above just that it's written sign language videos and I'm clicking on one blue hand. So let's see what's come on our screen. Barry Gold, book three. Next book in English for class three. Page one. Unit one. I like to wake up in the morning. See what the child in the poem feels. Good morning. Good morning, sky. Good morning, sun. Good morning, little winds that run. Good morning, birds. Good morning, trees. And creeping grass and brownie bees. How did you find out it was day? Who told you night had gone away? I'm wide awake. I am up now too. I'll be right out to play with you. Fanny R. Bukana. New words, sleeping, awake, gone away, page two, reading is fun. One, why is the child in the poem happy? So see? Hope you all have uh, were able to see. Just nod your head. I'll be able to understand. Few people who are visible on the screen. Yes. So, <clears throat> thank you. So, what is the solution here? It's like if within the same video have the ISL. Within the same video have the audio as well as text. So, now if in my classroom there is a blind child, that blind child would be able to engage with the video through audio. And deaf person or deaf child would be able to engage through these videos through sign language. And if I don't want to listen and I am interested in only reading, I can read the text. Okay. When you have these kind of inputs in multiple formats, this follows a framework which is called universal design of learning. That follows three approaches, multiple mode of expression, multiple mode of engagement, and multiple mode of representation. So that is why we have used these multiple means of reaching to a number of students. So any question, anybody? Whatever I have shared, any question, anyone? You can write your questions on chat if you are not able to unmute yourself. <clears throat> Jeep, tell me. Any question related to disability? 
Any question related to digital resources, how to make them accessible? No questions, okay? So let me ask you a question. Let me uh, a screen, give me just a second. Can you see? Yes, you can. So who is going to tell me what's just below the written text? Yes. I'll not only display, I'll empower you to make a audio for blind people. Yes, it's a braille script. I'm glad to have such, such wise audience. Yes, it is a braille script. And you have experienced this braille script when you use lift. Just beneath the numbers, The numbers are also written in Braille. The dots that you can touch. They are written in Braille. And I'm just looking for a particular picture. Let's pour our heads how to make that picture accessible. I would just like to show you that picture. <clears throat> Okay. Yes, now you all can see this page. What is this page? Class one mathematics book from, uh, from NCRT's old textbooks. Now somebody was asking ma'am how to show us the sample for audio for blind persons. So this is a page. Let's create an audio out of it. So who is going to give me the audio script for this? How to make this accessible for blind person? Yes, that's my question. Exactly, Ramesh ji. That's my question. How can a blind person access an image? But that blind child is also required to solve these exercises of the textbook. That is why we are talking about accessible resources. So how to do this? I'm giving you time to think and respond. No answers. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Very nice. So now you all have seen the pictures. So I have stopped sharing. Very good. Let me read out the... Yes. How can a blind access an image? Outlining the picture with braille dots. Okay. Do you really think that would be a wise idea? Braille is nothing but a script. 
So how you will do that? How will you outline the picture with Braille dot and how will it be accessed? You need to reflect on that. Then, let me read out the chat answers. Okay, by translating the picture in audio format. Beautiful answer. Sita Ramayya ji, now be ready to unmute and explain this in the context of the picture I showed you. Need to record an audio explaining about the picture. Naz, ji, the same question to you as well. You know, the audio person would simply record whatever you have written to them. In CIT at least, this is what we do. We, we write an audio script and then the audio artist simply records what we have written so you have to give it in writing that audio script prabhavati here we have a rhino and a dog facing each other can you tell me which is bigger okay tell me one thing a child in class one from whose textbook i have taken this image will that child be aware of the rhino and a dog just give me a second. I need to take this. Okay. So tell me. Nay, the class one child may not be familiar with hippopotamus. If, if, if the child is blind, he may never have seen a hippopotamus. Or never have even heard of hippopotamus or a puppy. Puppy he might have heard. But by sound, listening to the sound, will you be able to make an estimate of the size? No. Picture is printed in braille format. Picture ko kaise braille format mein print karoge? So that means screen reader. How the screen reader will read? If the screen reader is reading, that would be giving answers. Yes, they are taught about animals in KG. Sir, we have been teaching about animals since the past so many years. Tech models will you be able to make a life-size model of hippopotamus i have seen tactile models wherein a lion's size is almost the same as the size of a rat see these are the challenges you are all going to face so what is the solution here Okay, by making the image in convex manner and adding sound to it. I like the idea of adding sound to it, but making the image in convex mirror, that needs a little exploration. Convert into 3D. Okay. So will the blind child be able to interact with the 3D? Can we use these type of questions? What kind of questions, Parvati Madam, Prabhavati Madam? Giving them two leaves of different size, they can touch and say the answer. Okay, for leaves you can do, but what about hippopotamus and puppy? Everything in the picture should be ex explained in the script. Vinjit sir, this is sir or madam, this is what I am looking for. Give me the script. Audio books with reading pen is now available. This is wonderful. But that reading pen is also going to read whatever audio you have taught him to read. Right? So, no answers. All answers exhausted. So, shall I give you the solution? At least say yes and no. We can also make models of the animals with say clay and make the animals to touch and feel in the size. Yes, we can do that. But I just told you ki, I have seen models wherein the size of the lion is same as the size of the rat. So the blind child will carry the concept that lion and rat are of the same size. We don't want. Answer is 
let me do one more time the screen sharing so that we all understand it better. After this, I'll be opening the house for questions. So be ready with your questions. So <clears throat> let's assume there is a blind child in my class and I want to make this picture and this entire page accessible to that child who is in class one. And mind you, this child is also trying to learn Braille script the way our children are learning to read the print. Okay? So, this is page three of your mathematics textbook class one. This page is divided into three parts. Each part has a question and each question has two pictures. The first picture has two animals. First animal is hippopotamus. Hippopotamus sounds like this. And hippopotamus lives in marshy areas and hippopotamus size is much bigger than you. The second picture in this question is of a puppy. The sound of a puppy is like this, followed by the sound. And the height of the puppy is almost up to your knees. Now tell me which one is? Can we do it like this? These kind of audio scripts will make your content accessible. And then based on these audios, you can develop sign language as well. This gives the context as well to the children and to any blind person. So thank you everyone for this beautiful opportunity. Now invite your questions. Yes, audio description. This is what audio description is, Sherry Ji. And if we add audio descriptions like these, the DAISY will also be able to do the ALT. We call it in technical terms, this is called ALT description. Instead of an image in Braille, we have these alternative descriptions. What does a picture is saying? What is the layout? So this is it. Yes, and don't forget to add sounds. And another thing, just for the knowledge of each and every one, these ISL resources are available on Diksha portal. Another thing is we are running a series called Teaching Learning Interventions for Inclusive Classrooms. Every weekday from 12 to 12.30, each episode is focusing on one class, one textbook and chapter and instead of teaching the chapter we discuss strategies to make the chapter accessible right and there is a sign language interpreter also in these sessions and where you can access these sessions these sessions are available on ncert official youtube channel all the sessions are based on NCERT textbooks. And we have more than 625 sessions already in the archive. And currently we are celebrating dyslexia. What is dyslexia? I hope you all remember seeing the movie Tare Zameen Par. If not, take it as a homework. See the movie and you'll come to know more about specific learning disabilities, right? So we are celebrating Dyslexia Week. Today was the first session of our five days training program. Uh, not always writing letters in opposite directions, many other things, reading disability, writing disability, mathematics disability, some challenges with time directions and other things as well. So we are trying to generate awareness. If you are interested, you can see those sessions as well and get yourself registered. So any questions, anyone? And don't assume the questions could be very, you know, whether I should ask questions or not. The questions are always all valuable. Ji, any question? Najmuddin Ji. 
I can see you only on my screen as of now. <laughs> Rest all have switched off their video. So over to you, Diksha. It seems that they don't have any question. You know what my philosophy teacher used to say? When after a class, nobody asks a question, it indicates only two things. Either everything is understood by the learners or nothing is understood by the learners. So I don't know what is the scenario here. I am hoping for the second scenario that you have understood everything. Ma'am, any option for mental disability students? Yes, definitely there are many options options but what kind of options you are looking for tell me full form of daisy google it's a uh... <laughs> and one more thing when you're talking about mental disability do you mean uh, mental intellectual developmental disability or mental illness we have to understand difference between the two if you are talking of of intellectual developmental disability that is linked to your okay the both the things slow learners slow learner is not a